guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifting adventures to fit into the farmhouse decor. So in today's video, this is a tag team effort of me and my husband Chris. We just recently bought a sprayer, so we are testing it out. So we are going to be making over three thrifted bread boxes and I don't know about you but I absolutely love my bread box that I have in my kitchen so I am very happy to pick these up when I'm out thrifting and so I thought this was a great way to give you three different options maybe if you have one of these bread boxes laying around or when you're out seeing them if you are a thrifter I know the garage sale season's kind of starting to wind down but I just thought this was a great video that you know usually I do a mixture of stuff but I thought you know what I'm just going to do three bread boxes and give you three different ways so then you can pick which one is your favorite so that's what today's video is all about as how we updated and made over three bread boxes so here is three of these outdated bread boxes um, they are a little bit on the worn side and they all have water damage on the bottom so they definitely needed to be made over so i absolutely loved this bread box i love that little ceramic porcelain little bread that it said even though i'd be painting it over and it is a ginormous size but it was made very well so it definitely just needed some loving and I thought this was a nice homemade, I'm sure they're all probably, you know, homemade back in the day. But man, you can tell that water damage, whatever the sealant that they used. I love that I could take and reuse this bread, but it actually was plastic and not glass. Now, I do not usually like to paint these roll tops, and especially this one had some stickiness. And see how, you know, they just are used and abused. They just all needed some help. So like always, we are tag teaming these projects. You know, Chris is the problem solver. So unfortunately, or fortunately, this needed to be taken apart and to see why this was not rolling properly with ease. So this was all nailed together. So he's just kind of taking that scraper, just gingerly, you know, kind of pulling it out, trying not to break the piece in parts so that he can put it back together. You know, just enough that he can pull it apart and get some of those nails and those staples out of it. You know, you don't want to have to replace the wood because that's not cost efficient, but you do need to fix it and see why it is not working. So that's all he's doing is just kind of, you know, working it it's never an easy thing to do to take it apart because it's really not people when they nail it they don't want it to come apart but you definitely want to give this item new life and it is a beautiful piece so now that he has it taken apart you can see the culprit right off the bat that on the i'm going to call it or accordion you know the roll top here that one of the staples had come apart so it had a loose piece you know and that was causing it to stick so the fix of that of course was to staple it back in place so that it could be free flowing the way that it should be so now for this bread box we need to remove the hinges and remove the the bread plating along with the pieces of plastic that hold it in and along with the knob. I always say you need it's best to remove, you know, take apart what you can, not paint over hardware, paint them separately. I just think you get a cleaner, more professional look. Then the same thing with this bread box, you know, I'm going to be removing those hinges, you know, separating them so we can paint those separately also and the ceramic porcelain little bread is not removable so we'll just have to paint it as is this big guy definitely had a lot of water damage um i don't know i have a bread box so mine doesn't really get wet but then again mine is also painted and it's not the age of these so of course what we're going to do is we're really going to give these a good sanding even out where the polyurethane or the shellac or whatever they used to as a top coat to seal these you know really get it nice and smooth and then try to take down any of that water damage 
that it may have happened. And then of course, if there's any scrapage like what there is on the top of this, we're going to sand that down. And now to sand it down, he's using a 150 grit and then working up to a 200. The, the 150 is um, the lower number and that will remove more of the wood. And then the 200 will smooth it back up because the 150 will kind of leave it raised and bumpy, not smooth to the touch. And then this poor guy, he needed a lot of sanding. His um, top coat was definitely coming off. He definitely had a lot of um, water damage, but I absolutely thought I can see him. He is such a beautiful piece. Just wanted to give you a little bit closer view after I sand and what it looked like before. And even though you think, oh, I'm painting it, you know, that is just like the distressing or words on a sign. Once you start painting that, that all that bumpiness of that is uneven will show right through your paint. We are blessed to have one of these Ryobi uh, multi-tools where you can put a sanding head on there to get into the corners. That does make it a lot easier, you know, for us anyway, you know, it's just a handheld tool and then I can get into those corners that it's hard to get with the rotary sander. And yes, if you have a palm sander that's more of a square, I guess you can do that also. The one thing I like to do with these vintage pieces because they are just stained in top coat or polyurethane is I like to fill in the nail holes because just like distressing those nail holes are just going to pop through and not be that finished look that I'm looking for and then if there's any knots in this wood this is a pine one and then I will also do the same thing I will kind of fill that in also so I'll get a smooth um, finish. Now everything is taken apart, everything is spackled, everything is sanded. So now I just need to blow these off with the air compressor to get any of that sawdust, that sanding dust that was left behind. Now I'm sure you're thinking she's going to clean these. Yes, always, always, always. So and just because you sanded them and you think that you got any kind of residue off, do not take that chance and go ahead and get these cleaned. You know, we choose to use the crud cutter. This is the product that we like. You know, you can spray it on directly or you can spray it on your rag. You clean it, you wipe it off. It's just a great degreaser. Get any oils. It's a nice prep for these pieces. And then you want to make sure that they're thoroughly dry before you start any painting. So here Chris is trying out the new, <laughs> very new um, sprayer. So we will see how this goes, especially I would not have tried to paint this accordion piece by hand. Yes, maybe he needs a glove. This is actually the very first product we have even tried painting on it. And we have this little area that we have made into a spray room that was actually part of our shed part that the, we connected the shed to the... Um, pole barn so that we would have a spray area like this especially knowing that we live in Michigan and a lot of the months are very cold so we're still kind of working on it but we just had some product that we needed to get some inventory built back up so you know probably somebody's like oh my gosh critiquing a little bit go ahead because we are new at this and this is a beast of a sprayer but so far, you know, learning how to adjust how much spray you get and how to tip the sprayer, you know, over time we will get better with this. But oh my gosh, it did it did cover well, I have to say, and I'm so far absolutely loving it. But you just, you know, you just got to use it and get used to it. So yes, I did have to go back through the first one that he painted and, you know, it may be a little too much paint. And like I said, you know, everything that's new, you, you learn it, you watch some YouTube videos and learn a little bit more and then learn how to adjust it. So that's, you know, just watch for your drips, you know, you got to be new sometime. I will say that it made it nice, you know, painting that accordion and it definitely covered really well. You know how many hours of paint job this would have been, <laughs> you know, this would have been two coats of on a brush. So for us who resells the mass quantity that we do, this sprayer is a blessing. 
We actually let these dry thoroughly overnight, you know, basically 24 hours before we got home from work the next day. And they absolutely just turned out beautiful, a nice and smooth paint job. So what I'm doing now is I am spraying the one that I want to keep black with some polycrylic in the mat. And this is its finished coat. This is its top coat. So it protects that black paint so I can sand it to distress it. Now for the other two bread boxes, we want them to be white. So before, you know, last night after we got done using it, you thoroughly have to clean that machine out and the head. And this one is more a very much more expensive. So it has a whole routine of a clean out. So now we can move on to the white paint. And so as you see, he's getting a little bit better spraying it. Like I said, every time you learn a product, you get a little bit better each time you use it. So, um, but you know, as you see we kind of have an area sprayed you know taped off and tarped off and we'll we have a plan for what we want for a spray room and then as you see in the wall he has a vent so that it's blowing it outside so you know mask on and you know ventilation is proper you know to spraying especially when you're doing it inside and i can tell you i'm still happy that we have the sprayer for this piece on the bread box because he was able to achieve thinner coats on the white spray and we all know how many coats that it takes to cover on white that it dried you know well enough and good enough that we could put a second coat of white on there and so with the sprayer it only took two coats to cover and then we let them dry completely overnight the 24 hours again to make sure that it was good and dry so since all three of these bread boxes had water damage, which did not affect our painting at all, I just feel better if I seal them in with some polyacrylic as a top coat. Um, like I said, my bread box doesn't get wet, and especially for the ceramic right here, I definitely wanted to spray that off with a top coat. So I sprayed some polyacrylic and then let that completely dry, the polyacrylic and clear mat, and now I can go in and distress the pieces. So to distress this, since I used a polyacrylic, which is a little bit stronger than just the paint, I'm using a 150 grit sandpaper to get down through those sharp edges to get down to some of that black that we previously painted them and then of course it'll get some of the wood if i press even harder so that's how you when you go to distress a piece i just go along the edges of the piece and kind of let the sandpaper you know do what the sandpaper does and take a little bit of that product off and i push hard you know so i have some of that um, black that we previously painted underneath the white to show through and then if I want a little bit of the wood I even press harder you know it just depends on what look you're going for um, so as you see that's all I do just push hard on the sh on the edges with the sandpaper can I just tell you how smooth that sprayer left these pieces? So now I am just taking, I think it's a 320 grit, which is, you know, the higher the number, the lower the coarseness of it. So this is a nice smooth sandpaper. And so I'm just buffing it out in case I need to. But since you sprayed it, there's no brush strokes to f feel, you know, just giving that nice finished um, sanding. And I'll see if I can find a similar pad to what I'm using for the sanding, but uh, it was something that we got at an auction when a hardware store was closing and we bought a whole bunch of their sandpaper, so I'm not even sure if you can still find something like that. So on the black bread box, I'm using the same grit of the 150 because, yep, I sealed that in with polyacrylic also. So in the same thing, I am just pushing hard on those sharp edges of this piece and a little bit on those bump outs to let some of that natural wood show through just to show the details of this beautiful bread box. And then to open up that um, polycrylic I'm using some very fine steel wool and what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of that shine off that the polycrylic leaves behind but then I'm also opening it up for when I go to wax it that there's something for the wax to grab onto and sink in and is not just laying on top of that top coat so I have to say this step was a little bit on the time consuming but I wanted to achieve this look and for me it was well worth the time spent to get the look that I was looking for. So I'm taking that 150 sandpaper and I am hitting all the sharp edges of this little, I keep calling it a, a accordion, I'm not really sure, roll top 
part of this bread box and as you see it didn't completely get in and cover in the inside but that's okay because once you put it back together that's not parts that you're going to see when you're you know opening and closing this drawer so that's all i'm doing is i just want a little bit of distressing on this door also so now I am going to my silhouette and I have a couple breads that I'm going to be using for these um, the bread, bread boxes. And so this was at, in the design studio of the silhouette and I don't want the swirly part because I'm sticking it on that little ceramic piece on the one bread box. So I just, you know, I, I ungrouped it. I just took what I wanted and then I'm sizing it to the size that I need. I just love the flow of how this world bread was. Now for the roll drawer of the bread box, I liked this bakery. But I, then again, I didn't want the swirly part of it. And this was also uh, one of their designs also on the, you know, the design studio. So I'm uh, ungrouping it and getting rid of the swirly parts. And the same thing, then I'm going in and sizing that bakery to the size that I want. So I had a viewer share with me that if I, to prevent bleed through, if you use the same color that you actually painted the item with, um, and do that down first and let that dry that that's supposed to prevent the bleed through or bleed under of your stencil now i've tried this with maj Podge before and it did not work it actually actually made it so it just pulled up what i had my stencil completely <laughs> all the paint so i was excited to try this technique and so here i am do you know centering my bakery you know before you get that attached and off your transfer tape, just make sure that you have it centered. And then of course I have to remember, you know, this is going to be rolling. So I have to, you know, look at my box and see where the word is going to be pleasing to the eye. And remember that I have a knob on there. So, you know, just take the time to make sure that you are centered. And then I'm going to do the same thing here is I'm going to make sure that I have that good and pushed down and rubbed on as much, much as I possibly can, you know, and I know that I'm not going to get that all the way down in the crevices between the slats and that's okay. Yet again, it's that perfectly imperfect of the farmhouse furniture that I like to do. And I'm going to be using her same technique where I'm going to be using that white that I painted these with first using a makeup sponge from the dollar store you know and i'm just doing that dry technique you know i don't want to overdo it and make it like it was a raised stencil but you know what i do appreciate and i do read everybody's comments and why not people are smart and they have so many little techniques that we all can share with each other and i absolutely that's one of the things about youtube that i love and yes some work out you know some something that works for one person may not work for the other person but it's just nice that people are willing to share their things that work for them that's what our whole youtube channel is is things that work for us it may work for you and it may not work for you but that's the fun of it so my go-to stencil color is oh for especially for the black is always this multi-use and black that i get you know i just absolutely love the color it goes with my white and then I'm using another one of those makeup sponges from the dollar store. Yes, you could probably flip it back and forth and use the one side, but one, it's going to make a mess of your finger. And two, you know, I spent a lot of time working on these projects. I do not want to get white paint. And you know what? What is it like 50 of them or 25 of them for a dollar? You know, I'm just going to use one per use and I'm going to throw it away. Unless, you know, I let it sit overnight and use the other side to dry. Whatever's cost efficient for you. But I never want to take the chance of messing up something I have tried really hard to make as perfectly imperfect, I guess, as this. So, yeah, I just use one of the sponges per my paint color. Now for this little ceramic one, I had already planned on doing this when I even started the whole process of spraying it with polycrylic because, you know, I'm not really sure how that's going to stay on there and I want that to stay on really well on that ceramic. And then also for this roll top, yet again, because of the water damage, I'm really protecting these bread boxes and that polycrylic goes so long, so far. I mean, it doesn't a little bit just to seal that bakery that I had just put on there to protect it is well worth it and then I just take that 320 sandpaper and just lightly smooth them now on that ceramic piece I left it alone did not touch it because I did not want to 
to rub it off, you know, because really, you know, it does have some cure time that it needs to really not be touched. So to finish all these bread boxes off, well, the two white ones anyway, um, they are getting a good coat of the Verithane Finishing Wax. Love this stuff. We can only find it at the Home Depot here in town, our local town. Um, and it is a wipe on and wipe off and then just let it dry. Now after they have dried, it's time to put these back together. Now this was a homemade bread box, so actually, it does um, the accordion the roll top does go in and little out it does still stick a little bit only because whoever made this the router when they routed that edges you know where it slides in and out on the side pieces it's a little bit too big so it gives a little bit um, too much play but it's you know it is what it is it's a beautiful farmhouse bread box on all the knobs that we did, we I painted them black, you know, he sprayed them, and then I sealed them in with a polycrylic, you know, a nice top coat, because you use, you grab, you use, these are pieces that, you know, you use a bread box a lot, you know, chips, whatever you want to put in them. So, you know, that I we definitely want to protect that hardware, you know, and I, on the hinges and the those other items that were metal, I used the Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one and spray painted both sides of those and then also along with the screws and then sealed those in also with the polycrylic. You know, sometimes you just get so, having so much fun with the new sprayer that you forget to video the little things like the hardware. So now for this black bread box, of course, if you you already watched my channel, you knew exactly what I was going to do to this bread box. But if you are new to my channel, I absolutely love this Waverly Wax. I'm sorry that this bottle is just, it is what it is. You grab on stuff. So this Waverly Wax will just richen up this black that has been sanded and give it a nice just a nice finished look and it will pop that wood that I distressed that piece and I want it to pop. I want you to see those details. It just richens it right up. And now it's time to replace all the hardware also on the bread box. And you know, we were very gingerly to take these plastic pieces off the, you know, so we could be able to staple them back on. And then of course the tape is because we wanted to make sure that it stayed centered. So I don't know if I would have tempted this roll top without having a sprayer. I absolutely love how it turned out. You know, it is not a globby mess. I have tried to paint with a paintbrush on these type of items and it does not go so well. And I love the simplicity of the bakery, you know, and I love that they have tops that you can put, you know, a little bit of decor or some salt and pepper spices on. And then for this black box, I just, I can't say enough about this black distressing. And I like that it had that piece that said bread and black and white goes together. So that was a perfect mix. And like I said, I love that these bread boxes have that top that you can, like I said, a little bit of decor or a little bit of spices. I just think these... This black bread box is beautiful. And actually, this is the first black bread box we have ever done. And I'm not really sure if it shows on camera what a beast of a bread box this is. I absolutely love the size and I kind of, you know, sort of like, oh my gosh, I'd like to change my out and keep this one. But you know... I do like what I have, and I absolutely love the simplicity of that bread on there. And thank you to the viewer that sent me that tip about painting, pre-painting before stenciling. So as always, I thank you so much for watching, and which one of the three bread boxes were your favorites? I was kind of surprised that they all had water damage, because like I said in the video, mine doesn't get wet. But I hopefully I we have sealed them well enough that the next person that owns these will have a beautiful piece for their kitchen, you know, a beautiful piece of decor, and that we have protected it enough that it, they don't have to worry about the water damage anymore. So I thank you so much for watching, and if you're part of my YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you'd like to become part of my YouTube family, just hit that subscribe button, and as always, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I have uploaded a new video and along with that like button so YouTube knows that you like what we are kind of content. 
Thanks so much.